You know, I tend to be pretty thick-skinned when it comes to criticisms of religion and uh, Christianity in general, um, which is unusual because I'm actually not a very thick-skinned person. You know, overall, I, I tend to be pretty sensitive to insults, and uh, you know, I can lose my cool pretty quickly in a heated argument. But when it comes to religion, you know, when it comes particularly, particularly Christianity, I tend to be pretty complacent uh, towards the uh, currently fashionable view that uh, the Abrahamic faiths are the, the root of all evil in the world. You know, and I've realized that while Christianity may be popular among the uneducated masses, that uh, you know, it tends to be laughed at in intellectual circles. And I just seem to have kind of accepted that. Even though, even though I don't, I don't agree with it. It's, you know, it's just um, you know, many people I like and respect hold this view, and I've been pretty complicit in my silence. Um, you know, and I guess you know there's a few reasons why I don't tend to speak up about it. Um, you know, one is that Christianity uh, does have a lot to atone for. I mean, no question about it. You know the Inquisition, the, uh, a lot of what happened with the uh, missions in the New World, although there's uh, complications that there's a lot of nuance that uh, you know, needs to be understood, but yeah, it, there, was a, there were a lot of abuses there. Um, there's, um, you know, there's there's the fact that you know I, I I'm able to tell myself that they're talking about different Christians. They don't mean me. They're talking about people like Rick Santorum, who certainly does represent a great evil in this world, and and you know people like him really are a threat and uh, should not be tolerated. Um, but I think you know the main reason that um, I don't speak of is is become a coward. And I'm afraid of what others will think. I'm afraid of stepping on other people's toes and confronting people who I like and who I respect and don't want to get in an argument with. You know, and so I just lay down and take it. Um, about a year ago, I uh, was confirmed into the Episcopal Church. Uh, and, I, and, you know, leading up to that, I... Uh, was taking these uh, catechesis classes with them, uh, and in that in that class um, there were three gay guys in the class of about twenty five, uh, because this was what do you call an open and welcoming church. And we welcome people from all walks of life and all different sexual orientations, and you know, we sought invite people from all different walks of life to come and pray with us. And so anyway, um, yeah, there, there was a discussion that came up. Uh, about coming out as a Christian, and you know, it was it was an interesting idea for them to discuss, you know, whether about how they you know first had to come out to their family as gay, and then they had to come out to their friends as a Christian, and they weren't sure which one was harder. And that's what it's kind of like being a Christian these days. Um, you know, it, it's not cool being a Christian. Uh, people make all kinds of assumptions about you that, that you're superstitious or intolerant or weak-minded and you need a crutch. Um, you know, Immanuel Kant has talked about how uh, with the Enlightenment it was the first time in history where you'd be embarrassed to have someone walk in and see you praying. And um, you know, that's kind of that's kind, that's kind of how it feels. You know, faith is is a dirty word in this day and age and you know, especially being a Christian um, and you know another thing that bugs me is when I'm told oh I'm not like other Christians you know it's, it's like you tell someone oh you're not like other blank people yeah. I mean yeah I'm, I'm certainly not like a lot of the most vocal Christians like the one, one you might see on YouTube um, but there are others I, like me. I've met them. Uh, you know, like I said, in my, the church that I joined, there's others like me. I've, in the Occupy movement, I've met other people who share my interest in liberation theology, which I've recently heard mischaracterized as dealing with uh, liberating individual from their sins, which to 
totally misconstrues how liberation theology understands sin. It understands it in, in a social context. You know, the society's sins in, term, in terms of their oppression and exploitation of the poor, and said so looks at the yeah the Christian mission from the perspective of liberating the poor from, from their oppression. Yeah, and so yeah, anyway, yeah, I I don't like to argue very much, you know, especially about my faith. I and I I prefer to you know just live my faith. And uh, be an example of that, but so I have to wonder if maybe I don't do a good job of that. You know, maybe I'm not a very good Christian because you know, because sometimes I feel like Saint Peter when uh, Jesus told him that uh, before the cock crowed, he would uh, betray him three times, and you know, three times he denied knowing Christ. And sometimes I feel like like that's what I'm doing, like by by just being silent and downplaying my faith. In order to fit in and you know, not not be the the one to disturb the silence and and say, hey, you know, that's not cool. But yeah, I guess I guess I'll leave it there for now. Peace.